Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday. It's bright and early and welcome for thank you for being here. Today is day 13 of our 30 day profit challenge. I really want to thank you for being here today and appreciate you for being here as today is a good interesting day. We're going to talk a bit about discounts and all the funness that goes along with discounts. So if, uh, if you're following along, we've been talking a bit about the order margin tree over the last few days. And so today what we're going to talk a bit about is sales and discounts. Some of the things that people, you know, are a bit on the fence about them, whether I should offer them, whether I should not offer them, whether they're good for my brand, whether they're bad for my brand. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk a bit about what the difference is between discounts versus incentives and what maybe there may be some good things that you want to include in your business versus maybe some things that you don't want to include. And so with that, let's dive into it. Okay, so as I mentioned, day 13, discounts and incentives. So today, as we've talked a bit about, we're gonna get further along into our order margin tree, and we're gonna cover off the last step of the order margin tree today. So where we've been going over the last couple of days is we talked yesterday about returns. You know, previous days we talked about payment processing fees, we talked about pick, pack, and ship, and we also talked about your e-commerce platform. So today when we talk about discounts, we're gonna round out the last step of this order margin tree. And then tomorrow what we'll do is we'll take it all and we'll package it all together and talk a bit about how you sum up the whole order margin tree together. So without further ado, let's talk about discounts. Now, and what I'm gonna do is in order to take you through the options of different discounts, I'm gonna walk you through again a bit of the math here. As you know, I like to do math, I like to show you the numbers. And so what we're gonna to do today when we talk about discounts is we're gonna talk about a few different examples of a straight up sales discount. And then from there, we'll talk about a buy one, get one type of incentive, a gift with purchase, and as well as free shipping. So let's take a look at the first example here of a sales discount. And this is your sort of typical model where there's a, an option where the offer is a product list price of $120. And let's say, for example, that cost of goods sold is $25. And then the discount we're offering is $20 off of that. So in essence, what you're going to get in terms of what the customer pays you is $100 of product revenue. They're going to pay $5 in taxes, $9.95 in shipping, and that's going to net you total gross merchandise value of $114.95 or $115 basically. So let's look on the other side of the equation in terms of what you would pay in this sort of scenario. So the cost of goods of that particular product or the COGS is $25. So you, you know, that's a, cost you got to pay just to produce the product. Then what we've got is we've got the $5 in taxes. Now you have to pay, the customer's paying you, but you have to turn and pay that back to the government to pay for your taxes on your business. So it's really just a pass through. Then when we talked a bit about, we talked about shipping a couple of days ago, and obviously there may be a cost to doing the shipping for you, even though you're charging for it, there's a cost to you to actually ship the product out. So we've included that here. And that, so if you added up those the different elements, you're going to get to a total order cost of $38. Or on this particular order, in terms of order margin, 76.95. So it works out to be about 67% when you take the 76.95 over the 114.95. So not too, too bad. But you know, obviously, if you were selling the product at $120 without a discount, that order margin would just increase because your cost of goods would stay the same, your taxes would be the same, and then your shipping would be the same. So the only thing that's really changing is you're getting an extra $20 on the product margin on your top line revenue. So that's a sales discount. Now sales discounts can also be offered as a percentage off. So for example, a 10% discount maybe works out to be 10% of 120 or $12 or 20% could be $24. It really is up to you. You can play around with the percentages. You can play around with absolute numbers. It's kind of tomato, tomato. Some people like a percentage discount. Some people like a number discount. It's really up to you to kind of experiment a little bit and see what makes most sense for you and your business. Again, no right or wrong answers here. It's just ultimately what works for you best. Now, the thing that is with the sales discount, what the, the only, the, the challenge with this scenario is that the fact is you're taking the product when it's initially sold at $120, and you're discounting it right off the top in terms of the value that it could be creating for the customer. So you're almost in the mindset of the customer setting the expectation that, well, I only have to pay $100 for that product. And that means it's only worth $100 to that product, right? And so, you know, that's, this is some of the, the psychology that you got to play around with a little bit with discounts and, and understanding, do you want customers to be spending what you think the value truly is 
for that product and adding more value to the equation? Or do you want to be taking away value in this case and taking away from what the value of the product is? And this is where the whole debate starts happening around products and discounts, and whether or not you offer them or don't offer them, because in this scenario, you're taking away value from that $120 by only making the customer pay you $100. So in that sort of case, if you don't want to do that, there are other options. There are other ways that you can keep your value at $120 for that particular product, but then offer more value to the customer. And believe it or not, there's options here that I'm going to show you where you can actually not only give the customer what they want in terms of some sort of perceived value or some sort of perceived discount, but then you can actually put more money back into your pocket as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take a, a look at another example, what we call a BOGO or a buy one, get one. So in this scenario, you know, there, you've got a list price of $120 um, of one product, but then let's say the second product you're selling is either at the let's say half the price of $60 or it's the most expensive product in the cart or maybe you're selling it at the same price and you're taking a discount off a BOGO can be in, come in a few forms and few variations but in this case we're offering a buy one get one free and so in this scenario you know we're going to assume that the product is is let's say worth half the price of your product A from product B and the cog on that is 1250 so again half on the cost of goods sold so at the end of the day, the customer is still paying you $120. So they're paying you what you're asking for that particular product. You're just giving them a second product on top of that where they're getting it at an additional value. And so in this case, you know, the $120 is now what your product revenue would be. You got $5 in taxes, $9.95 in shipping. That nets you $134.95 in total gross revenue. So on the other side of the equation, what you're going to pay is you're going to pay both the $25 for product A's COGS that goods sold and then you're going to pay $12.50 for the second product or product B's cost of goods sold. So by taking those two and combining them, you're at $37.50 now for your cost of goods. So a little bit higher scenario than we talked about last time. Your taxes, roughly the same because you're just paying, you're charging five bucks. So you're going to, uh, you know, here you're going to, you know, pay back $5. And I realize my math might be a little bit off because it should be calculated at 5% of 120, but you get the picture. Whatever you're charged here on the one side of the equation, you're just paying it on the other side of the equation. But then from there, from the shipping, if you're adding an extra item, you may have to pay a little bit more in some shipping costs. So we've accounted for that here if you're gonna pay a little bit extra on the product side of things. And then from there, your total order costs have bumped up quite a bit for 254.50. But the thing of it is, is the customer's paying you now a little bit more than what they were paying you in the last scenario. They're paying you 20 bucks more. So you can afford to actually be charging a little bit more on your cost side of the equation so that you're actually generating more order margin here in this scenario at 80, 45. Now as a percentage, it only works up to 60%. We saw the previous example, 67%, but you're actually making more margin on the overall order here in terms of profit. So you can just see how sometimes when you start working with the numbers, even though you're, you're offering more value to the customer and on the surface, it looks like you're giving away more, you're actually making more in this scenario is actually the sheer absolute dollars. So now let's take it one step further. Let's look at what we would call a gift with purchase. Maybe you're not ready to give away the farm quite yet or give away a whole product. Maybe you want to just give something that's of a lower value or what we call a lost leader. So another scenario similar to buy one, get one, the BOGOs is it called a gift with purchase. And in this scenario, what you're doing is you're giving away a, 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 your sort of standard product at the standard value rate, but then you're maybe giving away a free product at a, a lower value. And so in this case, what we're doing is we're giving away a lower product at $20 with the COGS at five bucks. And so, you know, the math works the same on the customer paying you side of the equation. So you're coming in at $135 still, but in the cost of goods sold, it's a little bit lower. And perhaps the shipping is a little bit lower because it's a smaller item that you can throw into the box along with it. So your total order cost is a little bit lower than it was in the previous scenario, but it's also driving you more higher order margin or profit margin. And so you're actually back up into that 67% territory that we saw in the first example. So what you can see here is the customer's perceiving you're they're getting basically the same $20 in value that you've given them in the in the first example. You're giving them a $20 discount where you've taken away value. Now you're just giving them extra value on top of it for the same $20. And if anything, you're getting the same percentage of margin, but you're actually getting a whole bunch more profit margin in your pocket. So you can just see how the math by giving away something, you can actually make more money than if you're taking away something. It kind of seems a little bit counterintuitive, but it's actually the way that you probably want to be thinking about your sales and incentives. 
So now let's look at one more example. We're going to look at a free shipping example, which is a pretty common practice in a lot of e-commerce scenarios. So maybe you just want to give up the shipping on top of the equation and that's it. So, you know, this is a, a, a tactic that a lot of retailers will use when they're trying to get people to buy that maybe that first purchase or spend so much in their cart. So in this scenario, again, the math is similar where you're offering a $120 product taxes. And in this case, you're not collecting any shipping from the customer. So the shipping would be charged to zero. So you're only collecting $129 in this scenario from the customer instead of the, the previous example. But instead, what we sort of should, I realize my math again, should be 125 here, not 129. So what you end up worth is cost of goods sold at $25, um, you know, from the previous example, taxes being five bucks, you're still gonna have to pay that $8 in shipping, but then your total order cost here is gonna be $38. And so this one actually yields you the most margin, not just from a sheer dollars and cents perspective. Again, I'll correct the math when I, after the recording for you, but you're actually gonna generate more product margin here overall than your previous other two examples, because you're really only just giving up the shipping, which is you're only making a couple bucks on the shipping to begin with as it is. So what you're charging versus what you're actually, it cost is incurred to you. So you actually can even make more margin here um, for your overall business. So in summary, this is just a few of the different examples of a sales discount and some of the other options that in terms of how it could come up to you. So what the customer pays, versus what the perceived value is. And we'll just kind of let the slide do its thing and bring in the animations. But basically just this table will represent for you sort of the comparing the contrasting all the differences between what a sales discount is versus what a gift with purchase is versus what a free shipping offer could look like and all the different options in between in terms of what it could add in terms of value for you. So at the end of the day, you know, it's really up to you to decide, well, which one's gonna generate the most margin in terms of profit for your business but also what's the right thing that's gonna give you the most perceived value for your customers. So you can see here that the bulk or the buy one get one is, is the most perceived value for a customer. It does offer, it does come with a bit of a cost though, in terms of what the product margin could be for you um, on your particular order. So you just have to think about what's the right scenario you wanna do. Do you wanna be giving away value or do you wanna be adding value is the way to start thinking about it. And so less, rather than thinking about discounts as a bad thing, you can actually use, turn them into a good thing and actually create more profit and more incentive for your business. So with that, that's kind of today's lesson on discounts and incentives. A little bit more of a long in-depth one today, but a little bit more hopefully insights around how you can use discounts versus incentives to basically add more value to your business rather than taking away value for your business. So tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sum up the whole total order margin formula. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the last few days, then we're gonna summarize kind of how all this adds up to stack up to be your order margin formula. You know, last week we looked at the product margin formula. This one, we're gonna cal calculate the whole total order margin formula. So with that, I thank you for being here today. Again, thanks for being here on a Saturday. I know it's bright and early for some, but hey, it's Saturday. The day's just getting started. And so there's a whole weekend still in front of us. So with that, I thank you for being here today. Again, I ask you to be present connect with others, and go make an impact in someone's life today. Thanks for watching, and now I'm gonna pause the recording and take any questions.